Hi guys! So today I'm filming a fabric haul. It's a new year which means it's time to start on new projects and to make new projects. I needed new fabric. So I went to the garment district a couple weeks ago and spent all of my Christmas money and then some on the materials that I'm going to share with you today. I have a lot of fabric in front of me so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. All the projects I bought fabric for are going to be based off of dresses from the 1890s or the early 20th century. That period has a very specific silhouette and I've never made anything from that period before so I don't have the correct undergarments to create that silhouette, which means I need to make them. For the petticoat and bloomers and chemise, I got eight yards of this eyelet cotton fabric. I think it's really pretty and quite delicate and interesting, which I like even though you won't end up seeing this material. It will make the undergarments a little bit more fun to work on and a little bit more pretty to look at in the end. I bought this fabric from a store that was going out of business, which is quite unfortunate since I like that store, but I am a little bit happy because I ended up getting this for $3 a yard, and I probably would have paid double that in any other store since it's really lovely quality. For one of the corsets and the ruffles on the petticoat, I got shanting, and I got five yards of this, and I believe it was also $3 a yard. I really like working with shanting. It's very easy to cut and it's very easy to gather and it creates really full ruffles that have a lot of volume so it should make really beautiful ruffles for the edge of the petticoat. From a different store I got two yards of a striped cotton. I'm going to tea stain this to an ivory color and then I'm going to use it to make a partial blouse that will go underneath one of these dresses. I think I'm going to make this like a corset cover where it just ties around the waist and isn't actually a functional blouse but has a very pretty upper portion so I can still get that gorgeous detailed collar and yoke without having the added bulk of a full blouse underneath the dress. That's my plan for this and this was a little bit more expensive than the other two. I think it was five or six dollars but I only needed two yards so I didn't mind paying that. Once again this is just a really nice lightweight cotton with a subtle print to it which as you can tell I'm quite fond of. This fabric actually falls into the same category as the last one. It's just another subtle printed cotton. It was from the store that was going out of business, so it was also $3 a yard, and I got four yards of it. I think I'm going to make a blouse out of this and pair it with a velvet skirt and create a really lovely, simple 1890s ensemble. I know it's not the most luxurious fabric for that, but I think the texture of it will photograph really nicely and end up looking quite pretty, even though it's just a plain cotton. If it looks too simple against the velvet, I'll have to pick up a silk or a satin or something to make a more interesting blouse, but I'm definitely going to see if I can get this to work first. Now we're on to the fabrics that are significantly more fun to look at, and they're also ones that I got significantly more of, so they're on folds, like this one. This is a heavyweight suiting, and I got nine yards of it. I'm planning on making a really lovely cloak to go over top of an 1890s dress. In the movie Crimson Peaks, Edith wears this absolutely fantastic full-length coat cloak thing and I'm obsessed with it and I've decided I'm going to go ahead and make one. I will be putting a slight twist on it but it will probably look very similar to the one that Edith wore because I view that as being completely perfect and I don't really want to change anything about it. I had a lot of trouble finding this fabric. I wanted something that was heavy enough to lay properly but I also want something that was lightweight enough to nicely go over top of the sleeves and to create puffed sleeves that wouldn't have too much bulk to them. And all I could find were coatings or really lightweight suitings or fabrics that were perfect that were out of my budget. I found this in a store that I didn't even know sold suiting and I got it for $68 for the 9 yards which I'm ecstatic about. The only negative about this fabric is that it is slightly sheer which I'm okay with because I'm going to be lining it and I think I will use some taffeta that I have around to line it which is the exact same color as this suiting and I didn't buy it for this project in mind I bought it a few months ago but I think it will work really nicely for this to use as piping and for the bow and to just pair with that suiting I got this velvet I don't know what you would describe this color as it's kind of a dark fuchsia-ish maroonish berry color it's really pretty. It's such a rich color. I think velvet's one of my favorite fabrics just because the colors are so fantastic and deep and beautiful and I just love them. So I got two yards of this which should be enough to make a really obnoxious bow for the coat and for the hat that I'm going to make to go with it. To put underneath that cloak I'm going to be making a day dress from the 1890s 
and it will be quite simple with really big puffy sleeves and buttons down the front. I'm really excited about this project. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. For that dress I got eight yards of this taffeta and this is a two-tone taffeta that kind of switches between brown and plum and pink and just has a really beautiful range of colors to it. I wanted to use taffeta for this dress since it has a lot of volume to it, which I think will be good considering the size of the skirt. And it's also a very inexpensive fabric, and since I needed 8 yards of it, that was on my mind that I didn't want to pay $10 a yard for it. And polyester taffeta costs $4 a yard, so I managed to get the 8 yards I needed for $32, which I really don't think you can beat. And I think this taffeta looks absolutely beautiful with the velvet I bought. And it looks really nice with the suiting as well. It's a very rich color palette that I'm really, really excited about. I'm also planning on making a simpler ensemble from the 1890s, which will consist of a blouse and a skirt and a hat. And I already showed you the fabric that I'm planning on using for the blouse. And the fabric for the skirt is just a simple black velvet. It seems like every time I go into New York City, I pick up at least five yards of black velvet, and this was no exception. I got all they had left, and they had, I think, five and a half or six yards. So I got that for 30 bucks, which I think is a pretty good deal. Now I'm going to be talking about two evening dresses that I'm planning on making. One is from the early 1900s and it's kind of inspired by the first couple seasons of Downton Abbey, which I've recently finished and really enjoyed. And it's made me do a lot of research into dresses from the early 1900s. That's not a period I've ever really been interested in before and it's still not my favorite period of fashion, but I have been really impressed with how gorgeous some of the evening gowns are. And now I really want to make one of my own. So with my Christmas money, I decided to get some beautiful, more expensive than I would usually go for lace, as well as some more luxurious fabrics to pair that lace with. And I'm going to try and make a gorgeous Edwardian evening gown. So the fabric I got as a base for this dress was from the store that was going out of business. So it was $6 a yard, and I got 7 yards of it. And it's a silk shanting. It's in this creamish, grayish, champagne-ish color. And I really liked the weight of this fabric, where it's sturdy enough to support some beading, but it's also lightweight enough that it should drape quite nicely into the skirt of the dress. Unfortunately, despite watching the guy cut this and examining the fabric, I didn't realize that it's really badly water damaged. Like, the bottom 12 inches of it are just completely unusable. They're an entirely different color, and since it's a silk, I don't think I will be able to wash it aggressively enough and still preserve the color and the sheen that the fabric has. So maybe I can manage to wash it and then hide that fabric in the train of the dress and the bodice, but right now I think a good portion of the fabric I purchased isn't usable. I'm really pissed about this, um, partially at myself for not noticing despite watching him cut it. I was right there, I just don't understand how I didn't see it. And also because I obviously don't feel like I got what I paid for. I don't have 60 inches by 7 yards of usable material. If I look at it a little bit more forgivingly, I can acknowledge that most silks are only 40 inches wide and they usually cost more than $7 a yard. So I don't think I got a bad deal for this fabric, it just isn't the deal I thought I was getting and I don't know if I have enough fabric to actually use it for the dress. I'm gonna fiddle with it, I'm still gonna try and use it, but I am quite disappointed. Um, because I was really excited about this fabric and now I'm not even sure if it will work. To use as an overlay for this dress, I got 8 yards of English net, or 7 yards. It says 7 yards on it, so it's probably 7 yards. This was really difficult to find in New York City. People kept thinking I meant tulle, which is non-stretch and tears very easily, or athletic mesh, which is very stretchy and difficult to work with. English net is what's used as backing for lace, so it's a lot stronger than tulle and it's slightly stretchy so it won't tear when it's pulled on, but it has a much stiffer, finer texture than athletic mesh. So it was very difficult to find anyone that knew what I meant, much less had the fabric in stock, but I did find two places that did, and one of them had seven yards of it in black, which is exactly what I needed. So I bought the whole bolt. Yeah, I'm excited to work with this. I haven't worked with English net ever before, so it should be an adventure. I was quite nervous because the place I planned on buying lace from, the place I planned on buying most of these fabrics from actually, didn't have prices that I considered reasonable on the items I wanted. So I couldn't end up getting the suiting from them, 
I couldn't end up getting the lace I planned on purchasing from them, and I couldn't end up getting the cottons that I planned on purchasing from them. I went to that store first and I ended up leaving that store feeling really discouraged because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find the fabrics I wanted anywhere else. So I decided to go into a store I'd never been into, which is Express Fabrics, and I found the most beautiful lace I'd ever seen, and it was in my budget. It was more than I wanted to spend, but I could spend it, which is more than I can say for the other shops I went into. And I got three and a half yards of this, and it's black mesh, and then it has silver and onyx colored beads. They're all glass and metal beads, so it's a really weighty fabric, and it's just beautiful. All the embroidery on it is metallic, and it's double bordered, so it's 60 inches wide, and then on each edge of the fabric it has a border which can be fussy cut out and used as trim, which I'm planning on using it for. And I'm just so in love with this fabric, I just want to cuddle with it because it's so pretty, and I'm just in awe that I actually have this in my collection, that I get to work with it, and I'm really excited. I know I've said that a lot in this video, but it's always true because I'm just so looking forward to working with all of these materials, especially this one it's really really pretty. <laughs> I bought another lace from that store and this one was around the same price where it was $30 a yard I think. So it was a lot of money but since I was spending my Christmas money which was sort of special occasion buy something you wouldn't normally buy money I decided to splurge on it. And this is for a 1920s dress and it's going to be a short evening dress in the flapper style that really came into fashion at that point. I really like these dresses. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I've just been hesitant to make one because I know the shape won't flatter me at all, but I've decided not to let that limit me because I do really want to make one and I want to add one to my portfolio. Unfortunately, I didn't research these dresses a lot before I went to New York City, so I didn't realize that I tend to favor the ones that have patterns that have been beaded by hand instead of ones that are made out of lace and lace appliques. So when I went into the garment district, I was very focused on finding a lace that would work for this dress. And now I kind of wish that I'd gone down a different route and done most of the beading myself instead of buying a pre-beaded lace. But I do absolutely love this lace and I'm still going to use it in the way I originally planned. And I think it's going to look pretty enough that I won't care that I didn't beat it myself. And it's in this peachy color and then it has all these pink beads and sequins and little gold leaf sequins and it's gorgeous. It's so, so pretty. Like, I can't even put into words how pretty it is. I think I find the color of this one less striking than the black lace, but I do still really love it, and I'm so excited to use it and to get to hand sewing even more sequins and beads on it and making something really, really striking. To pair with that, I bought some more English net, and I found two kind of beat up yards of it in one store, and that was all they had. But I snatched it up and I ended up getting the two yards for $4. So I'm going to use this around the neckline and around the skirt um, and to help add some movement to the dress as well as being a base for certain sequins and beads. To create a sash I picked up some chiffon. I don't know if this matches as well as I thought it did in the store. It definitely looked like it matched in the store but now I'm not so sure. But I am planning on using this for the skirt as well as a sash and something that will go over the shoulder of the dress. So I got four yards of this. I think that's it for the fabric, but I am going to go ahead and show you the trims and notions I got. So I am planning on making a couple hats in the next few months. That's something I want to get into more in the new year. So I purchased some feathers that I could use on headpieces. The first two I got are from High Trimming, and they're by far the most dramatic. They're these beautiful ostrich feathers. I got these for the hat that will pair with the taffeta dress and the cloak but I'm not sure they match the velvet I purchased, so I don't know if I'll actually end up on that project or if I'll have to use them for something else. But either way, I'm looking forward to using them because they're absolutely beautiful. I find these large ostrich feathers kind of fascinating, just the way they move and seem to have a mind of their own. Then I got this little sampler, um, and I think each one of these were $3 or $4, something like that, so I picked up a bunch of colors I thought would match the materials I got. And the first is in this reddish brown color. And I actually got these with a different costume in mind. I'm going to be making a hat to pair with some plaid fabric I got from Joann's during Black Friday. And this matches that material really nicely. Then I got the same type of feather in this purplish reddish color. These feathers are really neat. They have almost an iridescence and two-tone quality to them, which I've never seen in feathers before. So that's sort of neat. 
and I think this will match the taffeta that I got really nicely. Then this is a half yard cut of black feather trim which was around the same price and I'm going to use this on the hat to pair with the velvet skirt I'm making. And then I got some little purple and green two-tone feathers which I'm also going to try and pair with the purplish taffeta that I've purchased. These ones are a green and black shift and I thought these would look nice with the fabric that I purchased from Joann's. I would have purchased more of these but they're quite beat up which you will probably be able to tell in close up. I didn't want to pay 8 or $12 for three sets of these when they were in such rough condition, but I liked them enough that I did pick up two. Since I mentioned the fabric I got from Joann's, I did want to also mention this cording that I got, which I'm going to use to do the details on that dress. And this was $1 for four yards, so I think I got 16 yards of it, which won't be fun to untangle, but will be fun to use. Then the two other trims I got, I'm planning a pink and white theme for the foundation garments. So I went ahead and picked up some peachy colored pleated ribbon, which I thought would look really nice around the neckline, and I got four yards of this. Then I saw this pink lace, and I just had to get it. I didn't really need this, but I am planning on using it on a Civil War era ball gown, which is in the same peachy pink color. And this trim was only $6 a yard, which is pretty good for beaded organza based trim. So I did get two yards of that. Next time I go into the store, I'm going to watch them cutting trim very closely because in two yards I was given this piece and this piece instead of actually receiving a two yard length, which I'm not very happy about. During this trip I also got some sequins. I'm hoping to use these all on the Edwardian evening gown, but I'm not completely sure they will match. I do have some vintage black and blue sequins, which I'm going to use on it for sure. And I picked up these bluish colored ones that will hopefully pair well with those. And these are just small, completely flat sequins. These ones are faceted, and they're in a goldish brownish black color. Even though the lace I purchased is black and has silver beading, I'm putting it over a cream base, which does bring out some warm tones in it. So I'm hoping these will match, but I'm not completely sure. I will have to do some testing before I fully commit to it. And for the same dress, since it's going to be super elaborate, I bought beads. I was planning on getting beads from Beads World, but I found these in different shop, and they were $12 for these huge bags, which I think is maybe a third cheaper than what you get at Beads World, since they give you much smaller bags than this for about $6. I can't vouch for the quality of these yet, but they do look really nice, and they're in the colors that I wanted. So I went ahead and picked up one of the seed beads in this grayish color and one of these black beads that are longer. For the taffeta gown, I bought buttons. And I needed to buy, I think, 14 buttons. And I hate buying buttons in New York City because they're so expensive. It's like $2 a button. So when you need 10 or 15 of them, you end up spending more on buttons than you do on the fabric for the base dress, which is just absolutely ridiculous to me. But they are really nice quality buttons. They're completely metal, and I think they will look really nice on the dress. I just didn't enjoy paying $24 for them. <laughs> While I was in the shop that sold beads, I picked up a few flowers because I wasn't sure I'd be able to find millinery supplies I liked online. So I got this one, and then I got these two ribbon ones, and I think they were all $2 each. But honestly, millinery supplies is so expensive in New York City. They were trying to charge like $8 or $12 for fabric flowers similar to this one that was fraying and horrible and I just couldn't understand why anyone would pay that much for the flower when it was in good condition, much less when it was practically falling apart. So these were the only ones that I purchased and I decided I was either going to use fake flowers that you can get from Michaels or I was going to order paper flowers online. And I've ended up ordering a lot of millinery paper flowers online as well as some other stuff that I'm going to pair with these dresses. So I ordered a busk, and I ordered some boning for the foundation garments, I ordered buckram for the hats, and I've ordered a lot of trims, since getting mesh trims and small trims tends to be cheaper on Etsy. So I have half a dozen Etsy orders and one fabric order on its way to me, which should really finish off and add a lot of detail to the dresses that I purchased fabric for when I was in the garment district. So I think I might do an Etsy haul as well, just showing you what I ordered online and including little mini reviews of the sellers because I know a lot of people are hesitant to order off of the Etsy when they don't know anything about the quality. Alright, I think that's it. This video is probably quite long by now, but I really appreciate you watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you want to know more about the dresses I'm planning on making, I will link a blog post with more information below. And I think that's it. 
Thanks again for watching and I hope you have a really fantastic week and that the start to your new year has been awesome.